And we're back with the wall tactics here to talk about how to use orc boy mobs. Here we have Steven Pampreen. Steven recently won a GT about two weeks ago using mobs of boys. He's well known throughout the community for his achievements in the ITC um, and his championship with the worlds and the championship subside that he has from playing orcs. So he's a long time orc player ever since 2018 is the ITC award here. <laughs> so you can see on the screen. So I think it'd be cool of him to actually himself try to teach all of us as how to optimize using the boys. And of course, we come with a nice little presentation. So strategy, how to use boys. Sometimes hit, pile in, maximizing what? Oy. So here we go. Gets time to get our little seminar on and get taught by war boss himself. So here's the list that he actually used at the GT if you want to see it on screen. We'll go back to it when we do go to the conclusion and actually talk about his overall tournament run through. But we're going to start with first the basics of how did he maximize these 60 boys that he had on this list. So with that being said, Stephen, if you want to go over the charge restrictions and give sure. us tips. Yeah, so um, I think just when you're trying to do this, uh, when you're trying to you know learn the, the rules, go back to the basics, go through and make sure you actually just read the charging restrictions and not like the little summary at the bottom, like read through the whole thing. Um, <laughs> I like, <how> you said <laughs> that. <laughs> like the summary is good, but man, the number of times I've argued with someone where they've been like, but the summary says this, I'm like, yeah, but if you read the whole thing. And it's actually um, important that people know that we're going to actually go over. There's actually a game of you playing the game. We're going to cover with pictures and examples um, from tactical tortoises live stream. So if you go to tactical tortoise on YouTube and you click his live events, it's the Midgard GT is uh at, we have the timestamps as well in the pictures and there you can actually see the whole game played out and it's a lot of times where steven's actually talking to people um and he goes at one point this is a quote from steven when the guy's trying to correct him he goes i have 20 dudes i never have to base when i don't want to <laughs> clearly we all have to base so what did you mean by that steven yeah so when we talk about the uh the unit the model restrictions so it's a you know for those of you who program it's a loop you're looping through each model when you're doing the movement. So you check, and that's when they say, when they say model by model. So mm -hmm. you start with one model. Can this guy base? Can he base? Yes. Okay, then he has to base. Then you do the next guy. Can this guy base? No, he can't base. All right, now all he has to do is move closer to the unit that one of the declared units. So if you declare two and they're on opposite sides of the unit, you can basically do whatever you want. Uh, but otherwise, you just got to move closer which means it kind of i don't know i don't know how many of you guys were playing back in eighth um where you could do those like wild orbits let's go around let's things <laughs> um but it really reminds me of how eighth used to be with like the orbiting um so basically you can do that but just on the charge moves um and then obviously the last one you, you can't move further than your charge roll plus bonuses and, and negatives um but i think the thing that throws people off and this is a little weird part for me is that the unit restrictions, though, talk about your coherency, um, selecting the unit within 12 inches and, you know, ending the engagement range. Those are all on the units. Those aren't all on the models. So you end up with this like weird sort of having to know future knowledge when moving model by model. So you can move a model by model out of engagement range, right? Because otherwise you basically wouldn't be able to move units. You you can move one, you know, you move the first guy, you know, they move 12 inches, he's out of coherency. Um, and then you eventually can fix it with, with the follow-up ones. And you just have to make sure that by the last model, you've fixed it. Um, so mm -hmm. it can lead to a little bit of a weird scenario. And I don't know. I, I don't know we if have <laughs> pictures that we're going to actually be showing where things end up. And yeah. mind you, you can watch this live as he does it. So he doesn't have to actually explain it to you. That's why I wanted to bring him on because anything we're about to go over, you can watch him do this example in real time. So you can watch this, go to tactical tours videos and then see it actually play out because we're going to talk about his turn one charges, pre-measuring his movements from his turn one charge, his pylons from that. And then also his second combat turn two mistakes that he made with these same models. So it's very important that you pay attention and watch the pictures that we have going forward because it is complicated and you can still watch Tactical Tortoises live stream and still get uh, benefits from that. So is uh, we covered how you have to actually uh, hit the units one more time from their charge restrictions, just real quick and cohesion mm -hmm. for anybody who's just listening audio wise. Steven. 
Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So the unit restrictions, you have to make sure that you end within engagement range of all the units you declared. And if you're declaring with, with boys mobs, my suggestion is almost always just pick one unit, pick the closest one. Um, because every unit that you add as one of your engagement targets as a charge restriction, it just makes it harder for you to do your charge. Yeah, that's you can actually... swing. You can swing on anyone. Like, you don't, you just move. As long as you're moving closer to whatever you and you end up, you can you can swing whatever. So, so to do this, complete this movement. You don't even have to really tag multiple things, charge multiple things. You're really charging one thing and then swinging. And in the right. swinging, you're trying to maintain unit coherency. You're trying to make sure that uh, the unit can end within engagement range of all targets. That's why you only pick one. That way, you can optimize the fact that you're gonna yep. get into engagement and pile in. But in reality, you're gonna be swinging. And then avoid engagement with uh, undeclared units. So at least when you start the charging, you can't. Then with models, models must end, charge, move closer to one of the declared units. So this is my model by model basis. This is why he was clear because it tells you you have to base them. But this is a model by model thing, which he covers. Then you must base the closest enemy model if possible, if possible, which this is in your control yeah. to a certain extent. And then as well as cannot move further than the charge roll. It's not that you cannot move further than the charge roll. Is that the charge roll is essentially your movement literally, right? That's why yeah. there's that example. That's why it's worded like that because the charge roll is your movement. So once you're done piling and, and basing everybody, you get your uh, movement, right? You get your charge movement. Then we go into the pile in restrictions here if you want to go over yep. this. So again, the unit has its own restrictions. The model has its own restrictions. The unit, the main part is, can the unit maintain unit coherency? And then the second part is any part of it within four inches of an enemy unit. Now you might be thinking like, wait, isn't there the objectives? Like, isn't that how we're, that's consolidate, different move. Do that after yes. combat. We're mm -hmm. talking about pylons. Yes, so pylons, you just check, are you within four inches? Unless you have like a weird engagement range rule, which orcs are going to have in a minute. So get ready. But um, is any part of your unit within four inches? So can you do a three inch move and be within an inch to be within an engagement range? And then on the model, each model in your unit must end the move closer to the closest enemy unit. Now, it's just the closest enemy unit. It's not the unit that you declared in the charge. And you also have the same restrictions of you must base that at that closest enemy unit so you again this weird case of all right you have to move these models but you just have to make sure that by the end of it you have you have maintained the unit coherency but when you're moving each individual model you don't have to worry about coherency then you just have to make sure you fix it by the end that's where you start swinging a little bit and then model yeah model yeah. must end closer to enemy unit must base closest enemy model if possible. So how can you take advantage of this or really optimize this, this word? So, with the boy squad, I really like it because it's really easy to, you know, you've got 30, uh, what is it? 36 mil, um, 32, base, mil. 32 mm -hmm. mil bases. You know, it's really easy to set them up 31 millimeters apart. And they're just like, ah, oh, damn. I can't get past. I guess exactly. I can't base. So you leave um, a small sliver gap, or at least a gap that's smaller than that 32 mil base to right. block yourself out. Right. And what's important is, you know, these restrictions are talking about basing. Okay. This is not talking about engagement range. This is something I actually messed up. I misread this. I played for the first half of the edition. If I could get an engagement range, then I would move an engagement range. Yeah. Wow. So that was a big mistake on my part. So I think there's probably other people there that that, that was actually a big one. change from eighth edition that was getting me messed up too. Yeah. And it was making me wild. And I started getting heroic on constantly. <laughs> so this is actually a big deal. Yeah. So, and this is something important, right? Is you set up your guys so they can't base. And how many times have you heard people, I mean, maybe you don't go on the internet a lot, which congratulations, you've touched grass, good for you. Um, but you've probably heard people complain about, oh man, I charged something and then I blocked my charge. How many times have we heard that? Okay, I do that, most... I've done that. You know, I don't like the internet. I did that when I started the edition constantly. I know, I did too, until I realized most of the time I don't actually have to block myself. And if yeah. you go watch that game, I actually set up a situation where I did charge a unit, a bunch of, uh, I think I was charging flash kits into one of those little piranha tetra units. Yeah. I charge a bunch of flash kits in and I needed to charge a battle wagon in too. Well, guess what? It's really easy to just set up your guys so that there's a gap 
where, all right, no one can base, but oh, we're, we're really far apart. So there's a place for the next unit to get within engagement range. Yeah. Remember, which is only within an inch. So there's a lot, there's a lot of room between basing and an inch to leave for a second unit. And I think we're going to see that a lot when we get these mega units of squig hog riders that we're going to have in this new. Yes. Building. And I think mobs of boys are going to be useful in all our new detachments. Oh, yeah. So that's yeah, yeah, why yeah, I want definitely. people to actually pay attention to this, which is where we move on to our actual uh, screenshot example. Here's a time yep. stamp on the screen, four hours and 26 uh, minutes into his tactical tortoises live stream. We have Steven here and his turn one pre measuring. Can you explain what's going on here, the color sure. coding, and what you were trying to achieve? So for everyone who's listening, I'm just sorry. We're going to be looking at images that might make this a little bit challenging. But if people can hear it. They can go watch it and then come back and see the actual pictures. That's what, that's yeah. why this is a learning experience for people. This is something they can go back and reference throughout the edition um, when they're maximizing their boy squad. So it's not a bad thing. So what I've done here is I marked the the blue I'm trying to mark is like the, the distance from my model um, to the enemy model. And then the yellow line is my planned path for my war boss um and now this was <laughs> this was my planned path from the get-go like yeah. when i set up when i when i deployed this unit this is what i want to do i always moved um and we're gonna have the opportunity to keep doing this looks like we got to keep the two characters uh attached to it yeah. i always make a little mega character essentially if i if i can of my knob my war boss and in this case it was the the, the knob with wog banner yeah uh, rest in peace whoever um, has a power claw you're bringing yeah. them with uh -huh. everyone i keep them all next to each other because i want to make sure that i'm keeping i'm i'm able to manage that all those attacks um specifically i find that if they're mixed into the unit i i have i struggle i i struggle to always put them where they need to be so what I'm trying to do here is... Oh, can I, I mention something else about that? Where you place them together it. is that when you start pulling casualties as well, you don't want your knob banner yeah. completely far away from your oh, world boss. God, it, it Both can, of those it things are to keep in mind when you're a new player. Not only do you want to throttle damage, but it's to keep cohesion once you start yeah. to pull models. It makes so it just, just trust, just put them all together in a clump. Just It's a mega character. Just like combine them all together. It's 17 power, cl power claw attacks. It's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Um so what I'm trying to do here is I want to hit his, uh, I believe it's a sky ray that's basically up against his far line. I think there's like 26 inches apart. And it's funny because of course I'm measuring this line that I, this yellow line here, um, yeah. because I know that I, this is how I'm going to get there. My opponent immediately measures straight across and is like, what are you doing, man? You're going to need like an 11 inch charge. And I'm like, hold on, hold on. We're going to, we'll figure this out, buddy. Um, now, granted, uh, we're going to lose some of the, the the benefit of this because this is the uh, this squad has the plus two movement enhancement um, and a wog banner, so I could call a turn one wog. Mm -hmm. um, we might we might talk a little bit more about what I think the orc. Oh, we will. So sorry about that. At the be. conclusions, we're going to yeah, talk about yeah. the new detachments, well, how you did personally, and what you're looking at going forward. So yeah, we'll we'll, we'll talk about why I think we're going to have problems now that the, the wog banner is gone and why it might be a bit of a struggle, but. Um, Basically, my plan here is I'm trying to swing my war boss into that back sky ray because I know my boys are going to be able to bring down this stupid little scouting vehicle um, without any help from power claws. Um, so what I'm trying to do is I pre-measured the distance between, um, let's see, what, what is the center vehicle called? I forget. Tetra? Mm -hmm. No, that is not the Tetra. That is uh, Piranha. Piranha. It's a very annoying. Makes you take Battle Shock test, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I pre-measured the distance between the Piranha and that Sky Ray, um, and I think if I remember from the video, it was like eleven inches. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure that when I get to the pile-in step, so I work I work backwards essentially. So when I get to the pile-in step. I have to make sure that I'm closer to that sky ray than I am to the piranha. So I pre-measured, all right, it's 11 inches. My base is like a little over an inch. So I just need to make sure that I'm five inches away from the piranha when I get to the pilot step. So then I measure five inches away from the piranha for when I end my movement so that I know that when I make my charge move, I can move closer to the piranha and be essentially five inches away. So I don't know. That was a lot. Uh, I'm a, a pop quiz. What, what am I talking about here? Did that make sense? Um, yeah. <laughs> do, no, you, do you know what I'm trying to get sense. at? That, okay. 
the, yeah, we have another picture as it moves closer. Trust me. And you have the game when you watch live. That's why it all goes together in a good theory. This yeah. is actually why I brought you on, though, for both reasons. Not just your list, because we cover a lot of lists here. Mm-hmm. But because I got to see it in real time, and that's exactly what I learned from this edition on how you can use boy mobs. If you don't understand this and you don't pick this up, you're never really going to optimize your boy mobs the way that a competitive player will. And that's why it'll catch you off guard when you bring it to a casual game or an RTT and you don't get the performance out of it and you're not really understanding why. What are people telling you when they're saying, hey, maximize tagging and gunning, gumming up the enemy gun lines and swinging all over yeah. the table and board control? This is exactly what this is about. So, yes, it does take a little while to chew over and mull over for anybody who's brand new, but that's why you can actually see him do it in real time. And that's why this is the perfect timing and example and why I wanted to cover this. So don't and worry, I, Steven, just keep it going. It's never going to be sure. super complicated, easy, yeah, yeah. to stay in words. But that's why we have a video for it as well. So so I um, in the game as well, I spend a lot of time talking through. And you can actually yeah. see right here where I mark the dice next to my war boss. Um, oh, yes, that's something we talked about. I have on here. Yeah, we, what I talked about and pre-measured. Um, because uh, this is something that you know, you should know, exactly i knew exactly what my plan was from the time i deployed in that building yes. so it was really easy for me to just pre-measure the whole turn and say these are the dice rolls i need to get to hit this awesome let's just talk about it now yeah and then when we get to the assault phase we'll just roll the dice and then whatever happens happens and there's no arguing and exactly. considering how complicated this was i think honestly we, we did a really good job of, of moving yes. quickly through it you can um, both of you guys did good tactical tortoise himself said it how you did with, with communication your opponent was really good at questioning what you were doing without being condescending to any degree and yeah. trying to understand what you were doing too because he was a gun line tau tank army so he was really trying to understand exactly what was happening and you were going through it look i need this because of this here are my enhancements yeah. here's my strats so this is never direct even for the top table tau player that you were against was kind of taking a second to chew this over and slowly he started to realize the danger he was in as you pre-measured closer and closer to him and yeah, he kept bringing yeah, up the yeah. restrictions to combat that most people understand he was like hey but you got to do this and you go no exactly i can do this because of this so just keep your don't worry about it it's complicated yeah this was uh no this was this was super fun to to play as well uh be able to do all that i really yeah, liked yeah. one of the comments on the youtube video which i of course i rewatch because you know it's what of course you, you watch it um the uh was like this is why i can never do well with orcs or something to that effect like when watching me like pre-measure like six different things and talk through my opponent and i could just i could just sense the frustration from the, the poor commenter of like oh uh even tactical tortoise himself was funny because he goes this is why combat in 40k takes so long and so complicated you yeah. get out additional <laughs> seven inch seven uh movement phases and i was like that's what people don't understand when you're playing orcs, guys, because there's yeah. other mobs, there's other hordes, but orcs are the ones that run at you and maximize the chargement for that reason, right? So yeah. as you can as you can see here, what was going on in this next slide we have at 433, once you've already made contact with the piranha, what's happening here now? Yeah, so this was um this was me trying to make sure that I'm tagging that I think that's a that's an ion hammerhead there. Mm-hmm. So this was me making sure, okay, I'm gonna tag this ion hammerhead. So I was I needed to know that by the time I got to the consolidate step, that the nearest enemy unit was going to be that hammerhead and that it was going to be within four inches. Yes. So because you were going to punch out this piranha and you knew that yep. based off what you had, your character bomb was nearby, everything was ready to go. You want to know now that I've, once I move, once I get my charge off, I block myself off with my 32 mil bases. Yep. I punch through this target and now I consolidate forward. How much distance am I getting? adding the charge I just rolled, the blocking myself out with the charges, my pylons, and then my consolidates once I finished off my enemy model. That's where these measurements are coming from. And if you watch the game as well, I made a mistake when I initially moved and I didn't put this squad, this guy that I marked here, I didn't put him back far enough. I had mm-hmm. him too near the piranha, which meant that limits me, right? Because then if yes. I'm too near him, if I'm two inches away, then I can only ever be you know, 1.99 inches away on the other side. So I actually need to start like five inches away so that I can run all the way around him to be five inches away on the other side. Wherever he goes, that boy that you're targeting, it's actually a little too close. He has to bring a couple boys with him to keep cohesion. That's why we covered that as well. So it's interesting. That's why this in the middle looks like a triangle while you're not getting closer on that side to this piranha that's near your battle wagon, et cetera. Yeah, so that's something that's like, it's really weird 
it's a it's a it's an uncomfortable movement that takes a little while to get used to is that if you're trying to do this which you definitely should be because you definitely want to get the most out of your toy man boy units it's not is, about killing necessarily with this unit it's about what yeah. you do in this game multiple times over yeah, and you and you have to kind of run away from the unit you're charging in the movement <laughs> phase in order to like get the most out of it. Like, like if I if I just if I just ran at that piranha unit, like my opponent, I'm sure expected me to because he's what like everybody oh. wants thinks they do when they measure out. I got to get as close as possible so I don't fail this. Right, but that's not actually what you need to do. You need to be you need to have like one guy there. Like, okay, mm -hmm. one guy, one inch away. Cool, you make the charge. Awesome. But then you want to make sure that actually the rest of the squad is 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 spread out as far away as possible to give you the most amount of flexibility to move them when you get to the charge phase. Because you know you gotta you know if you're getting advanced in charge, let's assume you don't have the plus two relic and you don't use all the strats that I did. Right, mm -hmm. you're generally getting a six plus d six, or sometimes even just a six inch. Right, so that's what your movement is. Mm -hmm. Once you get to the charge phase, you're getting. You're not just getting 2d6. You're getting the pile in and the consolidate. You're actually <laughs> getting 2d6 plus six of movement. So it's actually more important that you do the movement phase correctly to give you the freedom to have the charge and pile in and consolidate be where you need them to be. So that's why it's really important that you like run away from your from your target with like half the squad so that they can do the full orbit and, and get around. And so that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to. Make sure I touch this guy right. You might be asking, like, it's really funny, actually. The this boys really in this fantastic... great building. You're talking about the boys in this great building, right? Because you move them away yes. from that. Yeah, piranha. yeah, yeah. Like so I initially them like they were right next cape. to it. What? Initially they were right next to the piranha. Yeah. And I went, oh shoot. Uh, after I uh, appreciate my opponent letting me uh, fix the, the movement there. Um, I, I said, oh shoot, let me put move this guy back five inches because I I knew I needed to be further away on the other side after doing the charge. Um, and so the, the other thing I was going to get is this is a really interesting game, at least in my opinion, because I think my opponent was like, kind of, how do I say it? Like my job is I'm trying to touch all his tanks, right? Yes. And my opponent was like, also kind of trying to touch my tanks with his light vehicles. Yes. But I feel like he didn't like know why he was doing that. You know, like I was, yeah. I like, I know why I'm doing it. I'm doing it for a purpose. I'm trying to lock no, him in he, place he so was... that he can he was he just kind of like trying to digest what was happening, my friend. Like, I don't ever want to make people like feel bad at all. But as I'm watching it, I'm like, I've gone through this, not at the top table of a GT, but I've gone through this same thing where I'm like, hey, man, this is why I'm swinging on you and why now I'm touching everything. And they're like, what just happened? I thought I pre measured you. So it just, yeah, you didn't well, pre measure the pile in, the charge possibilities. Once I killed you, where I moved in, everything like that, where I'm going to end up next turn. Well, I, yeah, I mean, so, you know, we'll we'll get to it again, you know, when we go to the next slide. But, you know, he he kind of tried to lock up my battle wagons by charging them with piranhas and mm -hmm. stuff. But so the the reason that I'm trying to lock him up is because his vehicles can shoot my squad when they're in combat, which, you know, sucks, obviously. But uh, mm -hmm. that's fine because it means they can't fall back, which means I can be super aggressive on my, on my vehicle movement because I can just measure where all of his vehicles currently are. And if you get, you watch this, you'll see me literally go, all right, where's this line? All right. I'm going to be a millimeter past it. Like if you, if you, if he could move that sky ray, just like a, a half inch, he would have been able to shoot me with it. Um, but he can't because he's locked in combat. This is why people this is why I bring it up. This is what people really mean when they're talking about how to use a 20 man boy squad. It's not yeah. just about, I get to punch you 80 times. Some armies don't have something you need to punch 80 times. Sometimes just your characters and then the knob can get it done. So what is everybody else doing? They're taking over the table. They're preparing for the next engagement. They're locking down enemies. So the enemies can't maximize their own movement, their own shooting potential, um, yeah. and forcing, um, the initiative, whether it forces the enemy to now get them off or just because you're starting to get score and scoring primary and stopping them from scoring primary because now you've swung onto their objective that they were just trying to shoot you from. So we'll move to the next slide here. Yep. And so what was happening with this, which you uh, you go into exactly what this is with character placement. What's important. Yeah, so this was this was I botched this combat. Um, so even in a game where I won, uh, you know, it was great. I was very proud of myself after that first combat because I knew I did it. I did actually, if you watch it, I think I messed up one model, but I did most of it right. Um, 
this one i just i i just flubbed it um i got greedy those stinking you can see the two little rocket guys I really wanted to fire the rocket guys because my friend oh. said I was a, an idiot oh because heck? I brought rockets. <laughs> so I didn't advance the squad. I just walked them, even though I had WOG. And I was like, I just want to fire my rockets. How outrageous is that? That even a top player org player can't stop being like, I got a, I got a DACA. I like, know. You know, like, I know. Just advance, and, bro. Like, what the heck? <laughs> and it was so funny, too, because so like... Funny. Oh my gosh, my friends are like, if you put that, you know you're gonna just forget. And I'm like, no, no, it's gonna be fine. Um, so that was a that was a, a an oops. Um proper because... orky, it's fine, it's fine. It wasn't an oops, it was proper. Yeah, yeah. You know, what fair you enough. up here? Um, so as we talked about with the with the other one, you know, how you need to like move away from squads. Um, so there's two mistakes that I made here, one after the other. Um the first one was the war boss. You see, I have my little, so this squad has just has a war boss with it. So my war boss and knob are right next to each other by the corner of the, uh, uh, of the hammerhead there. Uh, so they are like basing it practically. They're an inch away, maybe even placed illegally, but you know, it's, it's tough to, uh, so, you know, there, this is not in combat. This is the end of the movement phase. Um, I got out of that battle wagon and moved six inches. Um, so the, mistake here is that i should have put the war boss like four or five inches away well first of all i should have advanced uh, mm -hmm. but i should have put the war boss away from the 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 hammerhead because then it gives me a lot more options as to what i'm going to charge um you know especially if i put in uh you know i i just needed to have another like three or four inches of movement for when i made this charge um i think i rolled a poor charge anyway so maybe i can just blame it on that but um <laughs> But in the technical you know, sense, this was a mistake. Yeah, it, it definitely was. It definitely limited my options. Now, I could have fixed that mistake if I had declared both the, uh, I think that's a devil fish there. If I had declared both the devil fish and the hammerhead. Because if we go back to our rules right about the charge in, mm -hmm. as long as you move closer to one of the units you charge to, you're, you're, you're golden. So I could have then that because my war boss is practically in between the two of them, I can just move him wherever he wants. And he's always going to be going closer to something. Um, so then that would have been fine. But I kind of was like, oh, I need to, to follow through. You know, my plan was to just charge this one. I didn't think it through. I should have charged both of them. Um, so those were those were two mistakes. Um, and then because I... I guess sort of another tabletop thing, a little unrelated to this, which I thought was I'd like to bring up. Maybe this is this is a maybe a, a top player philosophy, or or maybe just uh, me here. But uh, you know, one of my things is if my opponent and I disagree on the rules, but it's to my disadvantage or it's to my advantage, and I've like tried to make my point and they disagree with me, I don't argue at all. And you can watch this stream. I said, oh wait, I think I have to base all the way around your hammerhead. Mm -hmm. I, the, I, cause the battle wagon is not blocking me. Yeah. I remember. Mm -hmm. That's and, exactly what happened. Yeah. And, uh, and he's like, no, you don't. And I was like, I think I do, but okay. That's going to be really inconvenient if I have to do that. So I'm not going to argue with you. You even told him that too. So that wasn't even you just trying to be like, Ooh, you literally said, if that's true, it's better for me. Yeah. You know? And he still was adamant about it. Um, so yeah, we're aware of that, but we're, that's why we bring up the mistakes. So everybody understands that how niche this is, not only with the character part, but the actual understanding and yeah. he ended up being wrong because the movement still applies to yeah. when you're moving the models well, here. Yeah. Um, but you know, we got, we have two goals going to tournaments, um, a little philosophy here and then we'll get back to it. Two goals going to tournaments. We're trying we to go? win and we're oh. trying to have fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, here we go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're trying to win and we're trying to have fun. Arguing with your opponent to your own disservice rules wise achieves neither of those ends. So, mm -hmm. you know, like, I mean, don't like lie, but like, you know, just okay, man, if that's what you think, like, I, I don't know. There, I don't think there's a, 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 I think that's something I see some players get really hung up on is like really trying to play like a perfect rules game. And like, yeah, really, you you're there. not do that. It slows the momentum. It makes everybody cautious. And when yeah. you're doing a time clock specifically too. Then it's like, whose time are these questions on? Then it gets really minutia. Just it's not worth on. it. Just go with the flow. Yeah. Assume the most, the best in each other. And usually people won't let you down. That's what people don't need to understand at events too. A lot of yeah. the time people aren't looking to really dunk on everybody else um, with being like incorrect and lying. It happens, but 
the vast majority of us are generally honorable people. So just yeah. know that. And as far as what this mistake cost me in the game, um, my war boss soloed that <laughs> freaking hammerhead, just yes. killed it outright, I believe. Um, so I had 10 boys that couldn't swing. And then the other 10 boys <laughs> finished off the devil fish. So mm -hmm. I, I, I would have had that war boss and power claw swing on another, there's another vehicle, uh, I guess, Kinda. south on yes. the, of the board here. Um, that I would have been able to swing on and then get 10 boys swinging on the hammerhead. So like I, I basically just lost a whole dead vehicles worth of swings because I did this wrong. So like that's the difference between playing it perfectly and playing it just like ah, and getting your guys out and, forget it, and you know not advancing and just setting up. So, you know, we're talking about like, we, you know, going through games and you're trying to figure out what went wrong and what difference it made. Like this is the kind of difference this can make is you know, doing this incorrectly. And that could be game changing, you know, if you can actually Definitely. get another vehicle tagged up in, especially if you're not using 60. Let's say you're using one model, boys, right? Yeah. So you just need to do it once. Yeah. So it's very important. So let's get into the conclusion here and summarize this up for the lads and then make sure we get our questions going in here too so we can interact with chat. And then after this, we'll talk about you specifically as well. Um, you know, your path on the GT, what you actually had to go against with your mobs, boys. Sure. And we'll uh, talk about what your opinion is about the new rules and detachments because this is going to be fun for the rest of the video and we always have timestamps so don't forget that so in conclusion right maximizing charges is about piling to enemies tagging the enemies that you can with the pre-measurements board presence as in once you maximize your movement your charging the once you've piled in using those three inches from the pile in um use the rest of your charging maneuvement um, once you've piled in to the maximum of your capability which you actually do have control over it based on each individual model's placement yep. and then your consolidations once you've actually destroyed the enemy model so what this does is it limits the enemy's max potential by you tagging units that they don't want to be tagged they can't move they can't fall back get gun lines of sight um, and they can't prioritize what they actually want to kill because now you've touched things that they don't want to be touched most of the time which is through consolidation so yeah. is there anything that you want to add to that? So, well, yeah, yeah. I, I think my 100%, like, you know, this is, I, I think, um, you know, my only qualification on this is I was actually in the uh, the, the Discord talking to uh, one of your, uh, I don't know, do you have a name for your your, your people, your subscribers, Wagians? We the uh, boys. What do you mean? It's the that. boys? We're, yeah, yeah. The, we're the boys. What, it's the what are your the boys? It's the great, it's the um, great wall. And in the great wall, it's just a conglomeration <laughs> of war bosses. So we're all boys. We're all war bosses. It don't matter. Big Macs. Everybody's in there. It's a great wall. I like it. Yeah, yeah. So I was talking to one of the boys um, who was trying to figure out what went wrong in their game. Um in discord and he says like oh yeah and i charged like uh was a def copter into a big pile of vanguard um that's or uh blade guards mm -hmm. and he's like yeah they just chopped it up and i didn't get anything out of it and it's like i i feel like that's something that a lot of orc players maybe suffer from is not quite understanding what enemies do and so you know when you're talking about piling into enemies tagging and you know limiting enemy potential you have to actually understand what your enemy's potential is and what they're trying to do and why that tagging and why that piling in will work because you yeah. know and that's why I, I i bring up what my opponent was doing with with the uh, the tetras and the piranhas is like he was moving them towards me which is exactly what i wanted him to do and he was charging my battle wagons to try to like limit my movement but i'm like dude I'm a transport full of guys. Like I'm exactly where I want to be. Okay, there you go, Prickles. Unless <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> you guys know it's a real conversation, okay? It we're, was, we're it was, here. yeah. Um, uh, so you know that's something like, you, you know, it really helps to know it is, and and you know, most of what I'm doing in this in this tower game, it like really shows it off because tower garbage in melee, right? So like one boy touches a uh, you know a whole unit of breachers and the breachers are like oh no um but most of the time when we're dealing with armies that especially other melee armies i've always said that orcs are kind of melee bullies like actual melee armies kind of really maul us um in melee so like you really have to be sure that when you're doing these things like pay attention to the stats of the things you're going into because like just because your boys have swords and they have swords does not 
mean at all that your boys are going to win the sword fight, even if they charge in first. That goes into um, philosophy of the fact that orcs in, at mind, body, and spirit, we're a horde army, we're cheap units, yeah. we're not, yeah. you know, very valuable. And in that case, you need to know when to when to hold them, when to fold them, when to run in, when to fight on death. Exactly. All of these uh, choices that you get through experience sometimes or good at coaching or, or conversations and games that you've watched live because um, at the end of the day, even our most elite units besides Mega Knobs at the moment of this recording um, don't really survive <laughs> engagements. You can't really I know. Mega Knobs are looking. Yeah. yeah. Which good good uh, segue then to your next uh, part, right? Yeah. So in the next part is... Well, actually, what the next part is, I actually want to talk about you with your GT, actually. Oh, sorry. I, sorry. I want to give the rest of the context to if you're running mobs of boys, sure. right? How did this end up looking? Um, what was the, what did you bring with it? Of course, this is going to change because now we, yep. let's say, back in Bad Rook, but what kind of support are you going to look at when you're bringing mobs of boys? Besides Green Tide, it's all Green Tide, I guess, right? Just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I love the boys' units because, um, with enough buffs they do manage to punch even against hard melee pretty mm -hmm. well um two plus save with armor of contempt is just like the bane of my existence That's but the of most of ours existence uh you know it, i i managed to 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 fight my way through a through an army that had it so you can survive it but yeah so um, before i go over the list i'll go over the list and then i'll go over some of your matchups sure. and then we'll talk about the key points that the boys pulled out because this is still about the boys but yep. that's pretty much what your list is about anyways, right? So They did They did and, almost all the killing. And so. I'm looking at this, and it's looking like you could very much come to an archetype based off this in the Bully Boys detachment to a certain extent, even without wall banners. So we have yeah. a Death Killer War Track with Super Cyborg Body. Of course, that wouldn't be in Bully Boys. Money. Captain Bad Rook, who is gone, but it's okay. Then we have the two knobs with wall banners that gives us the additional <laughs> wall, which we can now get from Bully Boys. The Triple right. War Bosses for each unit, which would actually benefit Bully Boys, or if you were still to run the index attachment the war horde you can still use follow me lads and super cyborg body so these are still all available and then a weird boy then you have three units of 20 boys with the rockets that you chose to use and not advance two battle wagons all of the out. boys to get uh to, to, i assume both units of the boys are in here or what's up two two one in each one uh in the battle wagons no actually one um one of the battle wagons has uh oh yeah you no, your 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 list is wrong here actually because one oh. of the battle wagons had uh whatever that calls the death gun or whatever so it only fits 12 uh so my flash gets oh, i just took it out bcp so you're wrong oops no, no, oops <laughs> so, uh just messing around so then you yeah. ended up just using i know i was terrible on the bcp I it's think I think I all had uh, big I erased your in there as well. Like, yeah, I erased your mistakes. Uh, okay, so then, uh, <laughs> yeah, the battle wagons. Uh, one of them had the flash kits with the big gun, and then the other one had boys. Yep. Then you reserved one of the boy yep. units, I believe. Yep. So the one boys unit on the table would have the war boss with the enhancement for plus two movement. The follow me lads, um, and so they would start on the board. Because I guess uh, it's not going to matter because Bully Boys is fantastic. But for <laughs> normal things, um, if you you couldn't call the WOG, you couldn't use the WOG banner if they started the battle round in a transport. Yes. You could only do it if they were in reserve or on the table. So that's why both my, my, my knobs with WOG banners started either on the table or in reserve. Because the idea was if I go second, I can still use them. Naturally, I just went first like four out of five games. Um, and you're going to use um, Here We Go as well with that Follow Me Lads to really maximize that movement, which we still have in War Horde yep. for this combination, at least for War Horde is still amazing, guys. Like, uh, Oh, it's, it's I'm, really uh, I'm going to say right now, I think it's possibly still top two. Not even going to lie. Like, yeah. But we'll get yeah, into that in a second. Then really you, what I wanted to pull out here on this list, though, was the two kill rigs. Talk about the kill rigs in, con in conjunction with them. Yeah. Boys. So the kill rigs are awesome. Um, and, you know, we walk through the different games that I played, you know, it's going to come over again and again where I'm like, and then the kill rig decided to put the whole army on its back and win the game. Um, because that's... Ooh, uh, that's a big statement right there because you've been here all over online from Facebook to the depths of Reddit to the innards <laughs> of Discord to the salty neck beards i don't know but either way a lot of people say kill rigs are terrible um and that they hate so them and good. i think they just don't understand sometimes how valuable a multi-phase unit is in 40k I mean, something that benefits almost every phase of yeah. the game 
It's it's really um they don't really stand out in any particular phase. It's just one of those things where you 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 all of a sudden though you look at what they did over the course of two battle rounds and you'll be like, wait, hold on. That single unit managed to cast a psychic power, shoot this thing, assault, move again, cast another psychic power, assault again, and you're like, it just kept adding value in every phase. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it it's it's really good. Um, but yep. it's it's not um it's not good how it was, I think, in ninth, where you just took three of them and filled them with and just ran at people. It yep. doesn't quite do it doesn't work like that, which is it's maybe what why people I like want. It. People so, want I just ran at you and I just I know I track. I hated the kill that's, rigs. That's not that. orcs. Orcs are not an army that necessarily always works like I'm just gonna stick in your face and get there. The way that you call them a combat yeah. ability is very much true. Um, you know, other armies point for point, kill for kill, punch for punch are better data sheet wise. So that's where you get something like a kill rig, which is maximizing each phase instead and benefiting the boys. So you're stacking plus one strength on top of the yeah. wall, plus one strength. And then you're getting your own little beast snag of boys to a certain extent right there. Yeah. And, and also something to call out is I basically never, except like one time as a joke, uh, attach my weird boy to any squads. Um, I play tactical every time. Def Killa, War Trike, and Weird Boy, their job is to score is to is to play the tactical game. Basically, no one else participates unless they happen to be where they were going to be anyway. Yeah. Like um, a wagon or something climbing, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, if to climb, oh well, I was gonna stand here anyway and hold the objective. Yeah. I guess I'll do an action. But, I'm engaging because like, I already whipped over the your side of the table. So I'm right. Not, I, yeah. I don't have no they're not going out of their way to do. In fact, many times, because I, I almost always um since I kept going first, um, you can't generally rate with the grots if you go first uh yep. you can't so because uh, i'll explain why because please, thank at you. the beginning of the battle uh the game no objective is under anyone's control so when yes. you start your they're turn at contested. the beginning of battle round one they're all just contested you don't own any of them but once you start the second player's turn right the second player has started with battle round one they now control their home one based off the at beginning uh, at the end of any phase in the wording of when you actually control an objective so grots yep. can't do that and demons i believe can't sticky objectives for that reason either if they go first from what i remember yeah i mm -hmm. don't love that yep thing. it, gets, it <laughs> um, catches people off guard all the time do you think you would drop this weird boy for a snick right now or what probably i'd have to see i'd have to i don't know what stick rot's points are he might have gone up or whatever let's is he like is he's it... 95 let's just let's just Ooh. cut the difference people think he's 105 he's currently 85 i'll just say I mean, for some reason he's 95 i think i'd rather have a weird boy and a unit a second unit of grots than one snick rot um he's a lot tougher than the weird boy um as you might see in the in and the weird the... boy can fail the and the weird boy can fail does stick rock do it multiple times or just once just once it's usually enough. I rarely, I very rarely do. It's the enough boy. because he also infiltrates. Yeah, but I use. I don't want him infiltrating, right? I want him in the back, waiting to draw, engage, or something. Mm -hmm. I think I'd probably stick with the weird boy um, over over Snickrot, at least for now. Um, I do, I do like his damage output, Snickrot, but I feel like I wouldn't know what to do with him because I'm like, it'd be like the Rockets, where I'd be like, all right, I should probably go score this point so I win the game, and then I'd be like, yeah, but I'm gonna charge and then <laughs> die in Overwatch. <laughs> and uh, what would you? So actually, with this list, now that we have this list up. These are the enemies you went into. Turn round one, you had demons. Round yep. two, you had Necrons, Canoptic Court, I believe. Round three, you yep. had Blood Angels. Round mm -hmm. four, you had Sisters of Battle, and then round five is Tau, which we pictures we had with the timestamps. Yep. where you can actually watch. Also, the Sisters of Battle game was the day prior, I believe. So, or uh, no, it was prior. the morning of game prior, right? The game prior. Yeah, yeah, the game prior. So the yeah. Same stream. You can watch him play this list twice because he does all of this twice. So, if you're not getting it from just that initial presentation, and yeah. you can actually watch him do it, then you can see the visuals we put up with our little. Uh, very artistic drawings of purple and yellow lines. So, yeah, I guess I should have picked some more orky colors. Maybe no, I like time. that. They were they're distinguishable. Um, yeah, no, the uh, I yeah. So I guess I'll, I'll walk through them. Um, I'm calling this my revenge uh, GT as well. Three of the opponents that I played beat me the last time I played, so I felt good. Uh, oh, that feels it. super good. So yeah, how did yeah. game one with demons go? What were the boys doing there? How'd you use them? Um, so this one, this was my opponent's um, first time at a GT. Um, he'd done like one RTT. He was getting into beautiful painted army. Um, 
and you know but just kind of getting into it a little bit and uh was wildly disrespectful of the boy's output um he put like i went first i kind of moved up i knew that his whole army was gonna go back into reserve and teleport down yeah. so i'm just like whatever i'm gonna go stay in the middle of the board and i'll assault you wherever you land awesome um so that's what i did and sure enough he w- left with Bellacor and Sisalesk or something over the greater demon one that has the feel no pain. That's Sladesh. Um, it's got, I don't know her name, Soleski or something like that. Yeah. Um, so Bellacor and her both came down, made some charges. Um, I think Soleski killed a kill rig, um, but took, uh, but didn't actually know, Got it down to like one wound, and then I think via Overwatch and fight back, I think I got her down to like ten wounds. Um, Ew. So and then you, uh, what the boys do during this matchup with the demons? And then the boys countercharged Bellacor and her, and one rounded them. Oh shoot, that's nasty. Yeah. So I got with the other kill rig, uh, rolled the six. Oh, okay. I was about to say, how did that's that's some yeah. good rolling with that. So even rolled, fives. rolled mm-hmm. six. So then I'm then then I'm oh sick. Well, I guess I'll go criticals on fives then, um, and then I'm strength six. Uh, so everything's wounding on five. So oh. yeah, Bellacor brought straight from eighteen Nasty. to one wound. So that's a huge difference. The kill rig yeah. made that possible. Otherwise, you're just bouncing or holding. That's them. what I'm saying. Like you thought I was making it. Kill rig literally made that from like a, oh boy, here we go to like oh. Sick. Game's over. Nice. All right. <laughs> oh, um, game's over. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I mean, from then on, I mean, I, I, it was, it was over at that point. Um, and then the, so then, the, fun, <laughs> the funny part was that was the uh, the fast squad. Um, so that I charged them with, mm-hmm. and they just used their normal log banner. I didn't even have to use my full log oh, to do God. all that. So that and guy then, got buried. Yeah, and then turn two, I called the log, and that same squad went from like the back corner. 37 inches or something over two rounds to go end on his home objective <laughs> so oh. yeah it was it was fun it was, good it was a hard lesson to play against you and your first gt so then yeah. what happened in canoptic court this is a durable bully unit army but so how did you bully them uh well they're durable into most profiles mm-hmm. boys though <laughs> kind of slap necrons <laughs> hate that no matter what necrons yeah. hate that because they do not have a two of armor save with armor of contempt no they do not uh so my my opponent was kind of just uh i don't like i said disrespectfully kind of moved up in the middle and i just hit him with one squad stacked both kill rigs plus one strength on one squad. So they were strength seven boys, which is mean and wounding his wraiths on threes. And uh oh. between and then a kill rig charge uh one squad as well. And then my flash gets popped out and shot one. So basically by the end of turn two, I had killed all I think he had three wraiths left of his 18. Uh, so he had, he had half of one squad left. That's something that Wraiths just cannot withstand. Is something no. wounding them on threes with a stupid volume of damage one. Yeah. Uh, you know, this, like, and this is something that, one of the reasons that I really started running these boys instead of the knobs was because there's so much stuff that's damage reduction. So, yeah. like, he had Catans, but, like, they were kind of not thrilled about getting involved either um with this many boys because the boys will just wipe the katan out i mean the biggest no, problem sure. with the kill rig support he can yeah and and well the biggest problem with the katan is just like getting enough like idiots around the stinking little 40 mil base oh you mean the nightbringer no <laughs> yeah like if it's the big if it's a big base it's fine but it's it's the tiny base that gets me but yeah, so, uh, and then my opponent had uh, Silent King as well in that one. Oh, he's a, okay, okay, I'm aware of him. Mm-hmm. And uh, Silent King's little, like, laser, like, destroyer things, he just kept failing to wound a kill rig, and eventually he, unfortunately, was just like, yeah, I'm done. Uh, I'm, like, I'm going to go outside uh, for a bit. And so my, he shook my hand and, and walked out. Um, yeah. So, it was that was that was a rough game for him. That He's a team that way for Necron players if we get on them and we're able to put our high volume of punches into them. I promised you that the kill rigs being over that strength threshold of their odd toughness is weird. Oh my God. And then lethal gas can also give you that same capability if you're using the war horde. Um, you can pop unbridled carnage and then use lethal in the same manner and just punch it down rates in a very similar fashion. Um, 
Yeah. Then what happened with your Blood Angels game? Um, Blood Angel game. So this was another person who I've actually lost the last two games I played against. Ooh. Um, Casey beat me as well, my, my round two opponent. He uh, he and I are actually on a team going to Dallas. Uh, you can check us out. We're going to DreamHack. We'll be casting all those games. A uh, big team tournament between us, Art of War, Team USA, and Battle Brothers. Hey. Um, Heavy hitters. Yeah, so that'll be a good time. Like repping um, the wall. But um, yeah, so this is uh, this guy. I've, I've played him twice. Um, I think he played Eldar both the last times. I was playing Orcs in ninth, and it was not as fun. So it was real fun coming back this time and being like, yeah, that's right. I can move this time. I don't just hide behind a wall and get 95 on secondaries. Um, so this was a, a kill rig. The kill rig literally just uh, won me the game that and fight on death. Um, so oh, he came yeah, in fight on the, yeah. So he, he traded a unit of Vanguard vets that came like, uh, or no, his scouts came in and just assaulted my, this is a game I went second. Uh, this was, I think the one game I went second. Um, so he had two scout squads that hit my, my one squad that I start on the board with. Um, they came in and hit that and killed like, 16 boys um the two little scout squads uh because blood angels get plus two strength and then was they he sons like... of sanguinius you mean he he was the actual blood angel detachment. oh yeah so he was sons of sanguinius yeah when yeah, I yeah. that hardest matchup factions video i did i mentioned yeah they're pretty easy to beat unless they pick sons of sanguinius and then like two months later everybody started playing sons of sanguinius <laughs> They yeah. get over a weird threshold of orc toughness. Everything is wounding on three. They get from power fizz eight to strength ten, and then yeah. their chainsaws go to six. So they become actually quite reliable into punching us. It's 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 interesting tech into us, but I guess everybody, um, because now that's the way they play. So yeah, it was a problem. Uh, he had uh, so he was running basically four ten man bricks mm -hmm. of various blood angels. Um, one of them was a 10 man death guard company with a bunch of pistols in a rhino. Um, and then the rest of them were running around. One of them had minus one damage from Lamartis. And uh, so my goal is like, all right, I just have to make sure I, I hit that minus one damage with boys squads because mm -hmm. guess what? <laughs> Knobs would do nothing. Thank mm -hmm. God. I just brought boys. Um, mm -hmm. So he wiped out most of a squad with uh, his, his just going first, charging the scouts in annoyingly like when i fought back i think this was like a kill rig kind of failed here like didn't finish off one of the squads because he touched a kill rig mm -hmm. and so then i started my turn engaged in combat i'm like it's really annoying you still um, pulled out against someone that had already beat you so that's about keeping your head cool yeah so yeah, then yeah. how'd you maximize the other two boys units on your list to pull this through so he charged into that unit that had been really weakened um and I just fought on death. It was, I still had the knob banner. So I still mm -hmm. called it turn one and I just wiped the squad out in return. So okay. he just traded into nothing with that squad. It was like, cool. That's great. Two he scout rolled... squads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so the scout squads died to like random stuff. And then this was like a, a, a jetpack squad came in oh, okay, okay. Him on turn mm -hmm. two and I fought on death there. Um, and then one of my, the kill rig that had been stuck turn one started moving around, um, to get, uh, a different angle because he had two gladius tanks and, um, yeah, the, I failed a charge my, the, oh, the turn. So the turn I called a wog, I had rapid ingressed my squad from reserve, um, to get a charge off on to one of his big squads. And then he had one of his other big, he has three big squads, basically there's one squad that I'm trying to charge with my guys from reserve. There's one squad in a rhino, and then there's another squad standing behind the guys in the rhino. So my guys in the battle wagon get out. I made a mistake and didn't, and I had the battle wagon in a poor place, and I actually failed that charge um, no. from the battle wagon. Uh, mm -hmm. I failed like a six inch charge or something like that. And so uh, with re rolls, or okay, well, what are you going to do? Um, and, uh, but I did manage to make the charge with the guys from reserve, but it's the sons of Sanguinius. So they immediately just heroic intervention with the Angelus guy bops my war boss. Uh, I fight yeah. on, so, so the Sanguinor is his data sheet ability. Yeah. yeah I believe is he gets the heroic from deep strike automatically. Yeah. And um, then fight first. Yeah. And so it's quite outrageous. 
and so that means precision. he can pull people to fight him because I think that do they still have another strat where they can? Yeah, where you just pull... say everyone fight me. Yeah. So the same. Yeah. So if you guys haven't seen this with the Blood Angels, the Sanguinor, so their pseudo Primarch wannabe guy, he can be in deep strike and heroic from deep strike. So he literally just falls into combat from space essentially. Yeah. And then he fights first, but not only that, there's a stratagem I believe where, or maybe it's a dash ability, but he can tell everybody to aggro him. So then they have to fight him, which I mean, I think it means you can't fight with the other units or that yeah. everybody near. Him. Yeah, right. Because Everyone in engagement to. range has to swing out him. Yeah. So you have to swindle so he can suck up damage like that in a weird way. So he's just a suicide bomb in an awesome way. Um, yeah. So he came down and he sniped out one of your war bosses. Yep. So that's one of your another, another units now in jeopardy here, huh? Yeah, so at this point, I've just got two battle... Uh, I think one of my battle wagons died as well. Um, no, I think I just had... I, at this point, I had two battle wagons, I had two kill rigs, my grots, my flash kits, and uh, one and then one squad that failed to charge in front of 20 blood angels, and the other squad that's currently engaged with 10 blood angels and a sanguineous and just lost their war boss. Okay. Um, but... Did you fight on death there? I did not. Um, I managed to. Well, so this was the the weird thing. So he spent the CP to make me make me fight him. Um, but he was. It was one of those things where I think he just kind of like got excited about the combo and just like started spending things. Basically, no one that he was <laughs> fighting with could swing on anyone else anyway. Like okay. just from how it worked. So it yeah. was like, all right, dude. Like <laughs> sure, I guess I won't swing with anyone else. Like. Because the squad's so spread out, right? Another benefit to having a zillion orc boys mob compared to a more elite like Meganob unit or nubs is because your units are all spread out. A lot of those stratagems like sisters have and blood angels where they're like, no, fight me. It just like doesn't work because you have a ton of boys. Um, but yeah, so the squad though, uh, I rolled really well. Dice kind of just bailed me out. I failed to charge on the other side, so it, it evened out. But the dice rolls just bailed me out. And I actually, this like Lamarty squad got wrecked by the boys um, because he didn't have enough CP for Armor of Contempt then. Okay. So he's just saving on fours. Oh, then he's, that. yeah, he's getting ran through, especially if he has, if you yeah. pop Carnage or in the index, which why I still think index is super powerful. Yep. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Then, it, your next game was Sisters, right? Well, I was going to say that one then was just saved by my kill rigs then. Oh, just, yeah. Well, how did the kill rig save the Blood Angels game? Sorry. So <laughs> the kill rig, one of them that got tied up turn one, made it around a corner, grabbed an objective, did a tactical. The, the stupid little <laughs> catapult thing okay. shot a Gladius and actually managed to hit. And I made like a nine inch charge or 11 inch charge. Yeah. With the catapult, one rounded it. What the heck? Whole okay, thing. yeah, that's just super lucky. One rounded it. <laughs> the same, that, the same data sheet that just bounced off scouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Killed the whole thing. So well, with that is... being said, that's why I think triple kill rig is where you're gonna go if you're running the get big the big hunt. It, it, they're yeah, they're they're gonna I be think really good. People are thinking just about the squigs. You know, squigs are diminished now that they don't have sustain in the big hunt and everything. Yeah. Um, and you're not gonna get hitting on twos, whatever. Now, I think if you're going into the big hunt, really consider three kill rigs because you can now reach out to your hunt target with the last cannon. Um, and then you can also, when you get into combat, it turns all of that multi-damage output into my, minus two AP. So you can actually yeah. take advantage of those profiles of damage three and damage two. Um, yeah, but yeah, kill rigs, it's, that's lucky to do that. But I, as we're on that topic and the future of watching this, I really think I would run three kill rigs if I was running the hunt. Yeah, so. I think... And it's funny, I'm I'm like I'm just like, oh whatever. Like I'm talking about how good kill rigs are, and yet even when I'm building lists, I'm like, why am I not putting a kill rig in this? Um oh, now you're all stuck on them. Let's see I know, I know about that going after this video, hopefully. Yeah. But, then but yeah, then and then flash gets just kind of bailed me out. Flash gets killed everything else after that. Uh the minus one toughness aura from Bad Ruck, rest, mm -hmm. rest in peace, turned all those blood angels into T three, and then all the all the Flash gets for strength six, and so is booting them all on twos. Yeah, I mean, right. you can still you, that's a, sometimes a little overkill, but you can still do similar to effects if you get the kill rigs up. And boys, as long yep. as they don't armor contempt, if I make you take a four up save in a volume that oh, yeah. have, you're dying. It's good. So, and then you the next game was sisters. What did the boys do? I there's it's on stream, so yeah, this see, one was, was similar over. to the game. This was a real bad matchup for the sisters. Um, also, like I don't play as much as I uh, used to, uh, but one of the guys that I play a lot uh, is a good sisters player. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
the guy Gil was playing in round four is sisters. We're friends, you know, and he knows that I play against sisters all the time. So he came in like, Hey man, I just like brought some stuff to put together after you beat me here. So can we just like get this over with so I can go assemble these models? Yeah. <laughs> so it was a pretty quick game. Um, boys are really good into sisters. Uh, I think, um, you know, mm -hmm. I, I just, I, I made a huge charge with 20 boys and they murdered everything. Like that was pretty much the, the, the game. You ran down, you ran down and started tagging things. And then he could only shoot his wagon or his tanks at certain units. And he, he yeah. thought he could reroll wounds, but he was rerolling hits. And the fact that kill have feel no pains and they still have an armor save and the battle yeah, wagon. I feel no pains. Attempt. Also when bananas that game on my kill rig, I think I made like five out of 10, six ups, like on the first kill rig that he's shooting at. Mm -hmm. And, and then turn one, my kill rig just popped around a corner, did like six wounds to the rhino. And then he tried to move the rhino full of acro flagellants somewhere. And I overwatched it and killed it. So then they got stuck. Like <laughs> where word tower, I'm dude, word tower. I'm telling so, you, kill rig. <laughs> Stop talking. I'm gonna run kill rig. You convinced me. I'm not even. I here know it's. I'm not even here for that, man. We're talking about boys. Get off here. So then, what happened with the? But it makes boys. But it does make boys much uh, it, more reliable in a weird way. Yeah, game. that's the reason that I. You know, the reason that I looked at it first was because of the boys. I wanted to make the yeah. boys strength six because that's what turns the boys from, like good ish into like medium targets to like oh I can kill tanks now um, yep. because they you know. I mean, you can watch the games. 10, 11, you're getting over that. Yeah, if you get them up to strength six, especially, I mean, you can just get lucky and roll a six on, uh, you know, lethal hits as well, which I did a number of times. Um, you have multiple, you're more likely to do it. It's not out of the question. Right, and, you know, at a certain point with orc stuff, it's like if you, if you take enough of it that, like, sure, each individual thing is low likelihood, but hey, if I've got two kill rigs and they're both doing it every time, and you know, I, over the course of a tournament, I should probably get lethal hits a couple times, and maybe some of those are going to be even on important turns where I needed it. And that's what happened. And that's kind of what happened in your town matchup because on stream in that town yep. video, you ended up pulling off similar combinations and chewing through their small armored tanks, which people wouldn't really think about that as orc strength boys, strength four. But then you start adding the wall, you start adding kill rigs outside of the wall turn, and you keep that strength threshold pretty high. Maybe roll a six here or there. Yep. You have last cannons, boom, you get everything that you need going off there. Um, and I think that's great. And then, you know, your list ended up doing well, but I think it could be used as a little archetype to a certain degree and extent um, in that. Yeah, so, I mean, so yeah, I guess, you know, talking through changes that I'm, I'm looking at, um, I mean, would that be a, a yeah, good Yeah, we're going to talk, now we're going to just discuss, wrap yeah. up with, what do you think about the codex itself right now? If we're about to get this, um, you know, we're going to get into the points later. We don't have them yet, but in two weeks or so, maybe we will. So how do you yeah. think boys as a whole fit into the new detachments here? I mean, I think boys are going to be amazing um, in the new codex. I think they're going to be amazing in a number of detachments. Um, I'm not as high on the on the green tide um, as maybe some of the other people. I think How boys dare are you. That's I know. No, I, know. <laughs> I know. I wish. Well, I'm just like, I don't know. Um, I get it. That they they seem like they don't really move, and you're really strict and limited. And uh, a lot of stuff has blast, and a lot of stuff can battle shock, and a lot of stuff has crit fives and you know sustain these of old hand yeah, I mean, the you the know. reason that i loved running the boys in and why they did really well in, in in my games and i think in the meta right now is first of all damage one attacks can't get reduced by minus one damage mm -hmm. so that's a huge thing um there's just a lot of matchups where that opens it up um and then once you you know and you can move them a lot faster when you could put a knob banner with them Mm -hmm. um, so that you could actually, okay, now I'm going to get advanced and charged. Advanced and charge is like the best rule in the game. And that's why I brought up bully boys when I brought up boys at the beginning. Yeah. Of the so I think, I think it's going to end up being stuck with, with bully boys, um, because I just think you need that extra movement or index because you still have the movement kind of right index as well. They have a plus two movement, which, you know, it's not, it's not a ton, but it's the plus two movement combined with the plus two advance and charge yes. strat that all of a sudden you're like, wait a second, these goobers over here are basically bikes. They have essentially a 12 inch movement plus advance and charge. Like, that's and crazy. stubby legs getting stuck in. It's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and you actually, in that stream, I got a lucky six on the advance um, with my boys that came in from reserve in the Tau game. 
And so you saw the full just come in from reserve, move 16 inches. I think I only had like four inch charge, but mm -hmm. with the 16 inch move, I got everything I needed out of it. So yeah, I think that's, you know, what I'm looking for is, is the movement from the codex. I think the advance and charge from bully boys on two turns, you know, even if it didn't give me the rest of the bonuses, but it just said you get advance and charge for two turns and yeah. you get these really good strats. I'd be like, Ugh, it's going to be hard to turn down. Yes, it is. Still think index is going to be great. Yeah, definitely. Um, we, you know, we're, I think it's going to be weaker without knob banners. I think that's a big loss. At least <laughs> it's a big loss for how I play. I mean, maybe per, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna set up my own little shrine of uh, to to wog banners in my basement. Uh, you know, no, nah, dude, it's it's team. awesome. It's hilarious. Of course, I'm biased because uh, when I did tearless video, I said the same thing that the Nob yes, that's right. Fantastic. You love them too. I was that was months months ago. Like even when the channel was only like a thousand or five hundred subs, I was talking about the knob with wall banner uh, <laughs> as a as a kind of deterrent for uh, if you win second as well. Yeah. But now we have the double wall from Bully Boys, which is something we're going to have to use as well. I think the index is going to still be very powerful, but it's going to change its archetypes because Squig Hog Boys also aren't hitting as they did. I think people are really overlooking what happens when you get plus one to hit and constant sustains. Hits. Yeah, that's really yeah. what throws squigs into that realm of I can run anything over with volume. Um, hitting on fours and not having sustains is significantly different than, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, you know, I'm talking about the mounts, of course, but yeah. that, that is a big difference that people should think about already going forward. And that's why I wanted to bring this lesson forward with you of how to use the boys and how to get them stuck in because. I'm not at all underestimating how useful boys are going to be and other detachments of people that aren't trying to use grot tanks or people that aren't trying to use 18 mega knobs um, or people that maybe they are trying to use a lot of mega knobs, but they still need the OC and they still need to tag things that they're trying to slow and delay. So, you know, this is going to be useful throughout the edition. Um, we'll see if some of our predictions here came through or if your archetype or, you know, your list becomes its own little weird archetype and let's say the bully boys detachment you never know uh, even yeah. though the knob banner was huge um now you have almost like a built-in knob with wall right banner, so. yeah i mean you basically just say all right well i'm gonna take a, a war boss and like a pain boy mm -hmm. and i just get a once per game knob banner anyway like uh but you know it's my boys never survived when they got there i think that's a big reason why i'm like not super high on the green tide um mm -hmm. is like you know they get in there and they, you know, would fight and kill whatever they're doing and then hopefully fight on death. But like hopefully fight on death, like they're not trying to live for another turn. So no. I think, um, you know, looking at these attachments that you know, really focus on buffing like the durability of boys, I think mm -hmm. that's part of where I'm like, you know, you'd have to play them differently than at least I've been playing them. Um, mm -hmm. You know, maybe maybe there is a way for, you know, you to just have enough, but you know, you can just you can try that now if you want. Like you could have been doing that with the index the whole time. Like there's nothing stopping you from putting three war bosses on 20 boys and three pain boys on 20 more boys and just like running at your opponent. I mean, you have minus one to three win. weird boys and just jump one up the field. Yeah, or or just, or yeah, go nuts. Like, you know, yeah. you, you know, you can almost do a better job of it than I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll see. see. I, hey, that's I, your uh, prediction. And you know, there's yeah. always people that are out there. There was other people saying that kill rig sucked. There's I know, I know. Gas sucks. There's people that say the knob with wall banner sucks. So I always like to hear these things. It'll be fun because in six months, whether you're right or wrong, this is what we're putting out there. And I think it's great. That's actually what the point of the channel is. So I'm glad you were on and that you were here to talk because, you know, the channel's about, I always call it the great wall. I refer to us all as the great wall. It's not about me or my glory. It's about orcs as a whole becoming a competent faction in 40k and we gain the respect that we're supposed to get but i also think we're a complex faction as to we're the only ones that really really want to fight and bully in the combat phase because we really shoot on fives innately um and yeah. even like you said we're more of bullies because we're not even the best at combat even though we want to do it no uh, point for point i mean and yeah. so understanding maneuvers and cap and you know properties like we went over today is actually how you maximize playing orcs because sure world eaters can do can fight better than us point per point but they can't do what we just explained here with uh eight bound for example you know or yeah with a couple of like, berserkers they can't do these things um yeah, so yeah. this is something that is exclusive to us and it's very important for you to understand when you play mob because like you said they're not going to survive but they do need to tag things to get the most utility out of them 
That way, when the enemy blows them apart, they at least couldn't move and they couldn't target what they wanted to. Um, yeah. So with that being said, Stephen, we know that you're, you know, you're actually decorated. So I have no problem with plugging you as a coach when people want to you know, approach you. There's Facebook. There's our Discord. So you do us the honor as well as Richard Kilton, a lot of other awesome orc players that are in our Discord that you, we all think differently. We all have our own metas and understandings. And that's why it's important that you hear all the perspective. But guess what? We don't have a negative down boo boo us perspective. So orcs are doing great. And if you want to yeah. contact Stephen, orcs are awesome. you know, he can help you out. Little coaching session here and there. I do advise getting advice from skilled players. I really do. Um, when you first get into Warhammer, because it's a very complex game. So whether it's from us and watching this kind of thing or talking to him directly or talking to all of us in the discord of all the different great minds, you know, I appreciate you all in the great wall. So, Steven, is there anything you want to say before we check out here on how to use Orc Boy mobs? Oh, man. Sum it up in one thing. Get them in. Yeah. Tag tag as much <laughs> stuff you can and really realize that the charge is more movement. The pile-in is more movement. You can yeah. actually take advantage of the new combat rules if you limit the Definitely. gaps between each based model. I got to eat crow on that. I was so wrong. I read 10th edition combat rules and I was so down about it. And oh, then... me too. No, no, no. Me too. Shout out to my own cousin, Christian. He he played me with Tyranids. He's not even played Tyranids. And he did that. And he's like, I'm a heroic you. And I was like, this, this face sucks in combat. What's <laughs> happening? Like, I was so mad because I play boys just like this. Like, the first list I threw together yeah. in 10th edition was 60 boys with pain boys and everything. And then people just dogged me with blast and pile and her heroic interventions with uh, tyrants and stuff. And I was like, man, you know what? Oh, uh, oh, I'm, I'm, forget this game you know i was all butthurt because i just wanted to play mobs of boys so we're yeah, back yeah. uh this is how you use the green tie this is how you use the boys and get stuck in if you need more details hit up steven pamperina on facebook in our discord and just remember guys there's one thing to keep in mind is don't cross our wall because we knock your teeth out Ooh.